Today we're going to be taking a look at a Rockwood 2280. The features and setup that we'll be going over in this video are pretty similar across all of the standard Walt Rockwoods. So if you don't have a 2280, no worries, a lot of this will still be applicable to you. With that being said, let's hop right into it. First, we're going to start by making sure we have power to the unit. You can either plug in your 120 shore power or just verify that your batteries are hooked up and you're getting 12 volt supply. This is also a good time to plug up your air conditioner cable. Once that's done and you have power to the unit, go around to all four corners and unlatch the latches holding the top of the unit down in place. From there, we'll move to the front of the unit and begin to raise the top. You're going to raise the top of the camper until the green cord on the driver's side left corner is tight. But you don't want to tighten this too much. If it is over tightened, back it off just a little bit. Once we've got the top lifted, go ahead and start by pulling out your front bed slide and then do the same on the rear. Now that we've lifted the top and pulled the bed slides out of the way, we now have access to inside the camper. Once you're inside, locate the two bronze rail caps. These will be needed to support the top of the camper in the lifted position. You're going to slide the caps over the rails and clamp them into place to make sure they can catch the top on the off chance of a failure. Once those are in place, we can go back inside and locate the bed support rails. These rails will be used to support the bed slides when they're in the out position. Each rail is going to have two hooks that slide into a slot one on the main body of the camper and the other on the frame of the camper. It may be easier in some situations to just push the bed slide back in and hook it into place. The front and rear are ultimately going to be the same except for the rear bracket may be in a slightly different location on the frame. Now that our bed slides are out and supported, we're going to go around and pull the fabric down around all of our slides. We're also going to make sure all four panels are zipped together and that the Velcro is fastened around our lift rails. Now we're going to move inside and start by lifting the kitchen up out of the way. This will allow us to get to the beds and start lifting the fabric up into place. Under each mattress you'll find a support pole. This will be used to push up and support the main beam and tighten the fabric into place. The opposite end of the pole will mount to the bracket located on the ceiling. Once that's up, then you can clip the cargo netting into place, and then you're going to do the exact same process on the opposite side. Once that's done, then we'll work on getting the dinette and couch set up. Start by moving the cushions on the couch off onto one side of the bed. This will allow you to pull up on the backrest and push on the seat and move it back into place. Then just put your cushions back into place and you have a couch. Moving on to the dinette, go ahead and unstrap the legs and kick them out into place. And make sure to lock each leg into place by pulling out on the bracket. Then flip the table down into place. And then lastly, install the extension bracket by sliding it into two slots on the outside of the table. Next, let's work on getting the door down and in place. Start by unsnapping the two snaps to the top of the door and then lift the bottom bracket out of place. Slide that down and push it through the open door frame and move back into its seated position. Then use the knobs at the top and bottom of the doors to secure it in place, as well as the Velcro around the entire frame of the door, both inside and out. If you look under the rear dinette seat, you'll find a storage compartment that has most of your accessories in it. Start by grabbing the fan and light combos and installing those over each bed. 
These will just clamp into place and then plug in to the 12 volt outlets located on the ceiling. Another accessory that you might see is the heated mattress controller. Plug that into the mattress and in the wall and then use the dial to adjust the mattress to your preferred setting. At this point, we've got the camper pretty well set up, so let's get started camping. If you find it necessary, start by locating and lowering the four stabilizer jacks on the unit. This will just add a little more stabilization when walking throughout the unit. While you're under there, also make sure that your fresh tank and low point drains are closed. And once you've verified that, this would also be a good time to go to the front of the unit and verify that your propane tanks are open and ready for use. There are two options for getting water into the unit. You've got your fresh tank fill and city water connection. If you choose to use your fresh tank, you will need to go inside and turn the water pump on. But if you use city water connection, this is going to be direct pressure from the spigot at the campground, so no power is needed. Either way, make sure to undo the drain plug so water can flow out of the camper. And once you've got water hooked up to the unit, you can use all of your faucets, one of which being your outdoor shower. All of your faucets have cold and hot water supply, but in order to get hot water, you need to make sure that your water heater has the plug and water in it, and once that's verified, you can turn the switch on inside. Next to the water heater, you've got your fridge, the fridge can run on propane, 12 volts, and 120. Instructions for all three modes can be found inside. And if you need to check that the propane actually lit, you can check the peephole in the flue. Now moving inside, you can turn on either the air conditioner or the furnace, whichever makes sense for the time of year. And for those cool fall and spring days, you have the fan to get some circulation through the unit. As you came in the unit, you probably noticed the ceiling lights and a couple other panels that are in this same area. Some of the units will come from the factory with a solar panel and Wi-Fi. The solar panels require no setup, but you will need to refer to your owner's manual to get set up with the Wi-Fi. Going back to the entryway, you'll notice the fire extinguisher located near the floor. You also have the smoke detector on the ceiling, as well as the carbon dioxide detector on the dinette seat. If equipped, you'll also notice your inverter button is on the dinette seat, and on the opposite side, the converter box. This is not only charging your batteries, but is also where your breakers and fuses will be located. If you ever have electronics stop working, this is the place to check. You also have the GFCI breaker right next to that. Most of your GFCI outlets will be located somewhere in the kitchen. In this area, let's take a look at the kitchen. You obviously have your kitchen faucet, but right next to that, you have your three burner propane stove. You will need an additional lighter to light this. Just hold your lighter next to the desired burner, turn the knob, and wait for the flame to start. You also have the option of an outdoor grill if you decide to go that route. Just place the grill in place and use the external LP quick connect to supply propane to the grill. Right across from the kitchen, you'll find the wet bath area. When you lift the top, you'll notice that you have the shower and the toilet. The shower faucet is mounted down low so it can stow away tight, but you have the full surround curtain to pull around and plenty of hose on the faucet head to take a full shower standing up. You'll notice on the toilet that you have a blue button and a valve, but before we can get there, you have to first make sure that the toilet is actually filled up with water. This is going to have its own water reservoir that you'll need to fill. Just unscrew the cap and fill with water until the reservoir shows full. Once we've got water in the reservoir, we can push the blue button to fill up the toilet bowl. And then once we're done, use the knob to flush it down. And then once the tank is full, simply pull it out and dump the tank into the local restroom. Last but not least, we have the Thule awning. You might need a small ladder for this and possibly a second hand, but start by just unzipping the casing for the awning fabric. Then with assistance, roll the fabric completely out until it's fully extended. 
Once it's extended, you'll notice two rods. Simply push in on the foot of the rod and extend it out to length. You will then roll the tube towards the camper so that the foot of the rod can be placed in the bracket on the body of the camper. Then once that's fastened into place, extend the awning support and lock it in place when it's at length. Then take the second support bracket, disconnect it from the primary support, and secure that towards the top of the unit. Simply push it into place until it holds. Then use the ratcheting system on the top support rod to tighten it into place. Now, all that's left is to enjoy your new camera.